for decades until the U.S. naval base in the Philippines at Subic Bay closed in 1992. The neighboring city of Alangapo was a frequent liberty spot, especially for sailors and Marines. As seen in this diary, different servicemen had different reactions to what they saw there. Was it a place that had a reputation that was overly exaggerated by the thousands of sailors and marines who had frequented it? Or maybe it was just a dream. In actuality, it was a town in the Philippines with a seemingly unending row of nightclubs and other establishments located in a tropical paradise that was situated just outside the gates of one of the most critical and important U.S. military bases in the world. Most all of the bars and nightclubs there came complete with some of the best music I've ever heard anywhere, and each club had a bevy of beautiful women present who seemed to be almost angelic, all there to provide company and comfort to lonesome sailors who had been too long at sea and to help them relax and feel human again. Each night, it was much like a carnival atmosphere for adults only. Music blasting from every doorway, glaring lights, jeepneys and tricycles, belching carbon monoxide fumes and sounding their horns while transporting folks all around town, the spicy aroma of the many different foods being prepared along the sides of the road filling the air, occasional fistfights and altercations between sailors and marines that generally lasted no longer than it took for each side to realize that it was much more fun to drink beer than it was to fight with each other. Then there came the parade shortly before midnight, a nightly event where all who were going back aboard the base needed to get it in gear, lest they wind up being too late for the entrance gate to the Navy base, the rest finding their way to other domiciles in order to spend the night with their personal honey. Each day awakened with the sounds of roosters crowing and the hawking of vendors selling cold orange sodas and such to soothe the thirst of many who were making their way back to their ships after partying too heavily the night before. For the record, I for one think it was paradise. True, it was a bit of a rough around the edges type of paradise, but there was absolutely no place like it on earth. Good people, good food, cold beer, smiling faces, beautiful women, and plenty of them almost everywhere you looked. Most everyone encountered was super nice and hospitable. I vividly recall my first trip there. I was but a young sailor experiencing his first exposure to a foreign port. Upon exiting the gate, we were first greeted by the almost gagging smells emitting from river, a stagnant and barely flowing open sewer with a bridge over it that connected a long apode to the base, a river in which kids dove from small boats into the rancid water in order to retrieve coins tossed to them by the sailors crossing the bridge into town. And then finally, after listening to all the stories from my shipmates for many weeks, I entered a long apode for the first time and I could not believe my eyes. I had been told many times by the old hands of the many unique attractions of this port, but quite frankly I believed them mostly to be nothing but overly glorified memories of the ones relating them to me. Wow, was I ever wrong. In the later years of my naval career while crossing the pond, we often told the newbies tales of what they could expect when we hit Subic Bay. It was during these times that I remembered back to when I was once like these young sailors and now it was their turn. Many of them had never even left their hometowns, and now they found themselves riding a fully armed U.S. Navy warship manned by a crew of seasoned sailors, churning across the big pond and traveling into adventures that they could never really conceive of without actually experiencing them. In being there with these young sailors as they first exited the gate at Naval Station Subic Bay, then crossed the river and the bridge that in many cases initiated their graduation from boys into men, I found great pleasure in escorting them into the port and at the same time recalling the days when I had first had that amazing experience.
Now, unfortunately, gone are the days of the Seven Fleet Liberty in the world's greatest port. Those days that I experienced long ago were extremely happy. And when we got liberty, it generally involved maximum exposure to lots of mud, blood, and beer as the streets were unpaved and things got really wet and wild during the monsoons. They were happy days spent with beautiful people in a place that seemed to me to be a paradise on earth. Alangapo City bordered Subic Bay Naval Base. This is where we took liberty. Well, not we. I only went in one time to experience the place. Alangapo made Tijuana, Mexico look like a Boy Scout camp. Once outside the gate, you had to cross a bridge over a small river that the sailors dubbed River because it was so nasty and smelled like a sewer. There would be young boys down in the river to recover coins dropped by the sailors for their entertainment. After I crossed, the first thing I saw was a small cart with wooden spoked wheels on which was a display of roasted monkey meat on strings for sale. On the side of the cart was a sawed off shotgun and a big man standing behind it that looked as if he would not hesitate to use the shotgun if he needed to. I walked into the main street of the city. There were wooden sidewalks over a very muddy dirt road. You walk by a bar, a whorehouse, another bar, another whorehouse, another bar, and so on and so on. They had sprinkled in a few eating establishments that I wasn't interested in visiting. One whorehouse had some skinny sailor hanging outside of a second floor window with a prostitute pounding on his fingers and some shipmates standing below to catch him when he would eventually fall. I decided not to go in to any of the bars. You would hear stories of guys going into the bars and immediately met by a woman that would grab him and lead him over to a table and ask for drinks. Nah, I didn't find the girls all that attractive, actually. Every kind of debauchery that I can't mention here was being performed inside. A typical sailor's dream town. I guess I wasn't a typical sailor, but I got a good laugh just looking around. Of course, there was way too much drinking and too much money being taken from sailors. Some stupid guys that would wander down a side alley would get rolled, stabbed, and robbed. The women had what they called butterfly knives in their bras, if they had bras, and would whip them out in a flash if some sailor would get too fresh. We had heard of deaths in the city. You know, some guys just don't have much sense. But what can you expect of a bunch of teenage boys their first time away from home with an abundance of testosterone flowing through their veins? There were young boys who would offer to shine your shoes. Often, if you refused, they would leave, then run back to you and swipe your white uniform with black shoe polish. I walked back out of town and sat on a bench by the gate. The cattle car was arriving, and a bunch of new sober sailors with clean uniforms casually stepped out of the trailer and ambled toward the gate. A sailor next to me said, watch this, as he chuckled. Drunk sailors were stumbling into the cattle car. Some were cussing, some puking. These were not the noble sailors that were plastered on the Join the Navy posters that I always saw back home. The cattle car was pretty much filled up when the show started. A poor third-class petty officer, not a qualified, trained shore patrol member, just somebody that drew the duty that night, was assigned to ride back with a truckload of drunk sailors. For the life of me, I don't know why this was done. I guess it was to satisfy some Navy regulation or something. This poor guy, wearing a white dress uniform, had a white SP helmet, a black SP armband, a white utility belt which held a black billy club. He climbed aboard and the school bus door closed. The truck started slowly moving when the door slams open. Out flies a white helmet, then the billy club, then the white belt, then the poor petty officer with the lily white uniform that was about to become very muddy. I mean, the guy comes flying out in a perfectly horizontal position like Superman in flight 
and lands face down in the mud. Hearty laughter comes from the cattle car while the door remains open and the fist fights are beginning inside. It's time to find some alternative transportation back to the base. There are plenty of jeepneys, which are World War II jeeps that were left in the Philippines after the war that people had rigged up to look like taxis with tacky painted stripes and dingle balls all over them. You have to negotiate a price for your trip ahead of time, otherwise the guy will demand some outlandish price at your destination that you had better pay. Remember the sawed-off shotgun? Anyway, we got back to the pier, and I bid a long adieu forever.